But when we look into the the metastatic space, um, you've obviously done a lot of work on the role of um, maintenance of Ilimab. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, your view on the data for the the role of the immune checkpoint inhibitors in that setting for the patients with upper tract disease after sort of upfront uh, chemotherapy. Great question. Thanks again. Uh, I think uh, the Javelin Bladder 100 trial uh, was a, a very positive, definitive trial that changed the landscape in patients with metastatic urothelial cancer. I think metastatic disease is different and localized in a sense that we uh, pretty much lump upper track and lower track together uh, in metastatic disease trials. We think, uh, if you think about it, the biology of disease is not very, very different. However, I can point out that upper tract disease probably represents an, an enriched biology of a subset of bladder cancer. So there's a different frequency incidence, let's say, or prevalence of, of a distinct uh, a biology, which is present in bladder cancer, but is overrepresented in much higher frequency in upper tract disease. So because of those biological, let's say, differences in frequency, we need dedicated trials in localized disease, in metastatic disease, we have traditionally put them together or treat them together. I think it's important to look at the subsets for sure, but again, we it's hard to answer definitively the questions uh, when we have underpowered subsets. I think the take home point from Javelin is that they offer maintenance of Elumab as switch maintenance therapy in all patients with response to stable disease, regardless of upper or lower tract regardless if they got GEMSYS or GEMCARBO or dodens and VAC, regardless if they got CRPR or stable disease to platinum-based chemotherapy as induction, and regardless of the number of uh, cycles or reduction of chemotherapy. I think the trial was very positive. If you look at the forest plot, you know, you can argue the different degree and magnitude of benefit, but the, the trend was there across the subsets. And I think I feel confident to offer, nivo, uh, sorry, uh, to offer uh, switch maintenance Avelumab anti pdl one uh, in all of those patients uh, uh, for uh, metastatic upper and lower tract diseases. No, so that's a really sort of helpful and clear message. And I guess maybe the last question before we uh, uh, let you go is uh, your thoughts on the um, targeted therapies, uh, ADCs and um, uh, VEGF inhibitors uh, in upper tract disease and, and their emerging role? Great question. I, I think there is a huge uh, enthusiasm about antibody drug conjugates. I call them targeted chemotherapy for patients. I describe them the construct with the uh, antibody and the link and the payload. Uh, of course, nothing is perfect. Nothing is 100% targeted, but it's definitely the right effort. I think ADCs are here to stay there, transforming the landscape of urothelial cancer. And Fortum of Edotin has a full approval in uh, uh, different settings. And Tuzon Govitigan has an accelerated approval uh, after chemotherapy and sequel inhibition. Uh, I think uh, both of them uh, have a role. And again, I, I think uh, about using them uh, in metastatic this setting based on the FDA label and indication, regardless of upper versus lower tract. I think there is a significant effort to look at uh, nectin 4 expression for infortinib and TROP2 expression for satituzumab in different subsets. Uh, we just published a manuscript that is coming out, uh, I think, uh, 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 now uh, actively looking at the TROP2 and nectin 4 expression in variant histologies. And uh, we saw some, you know, in expression of those targets of these ADCs, even in patients with variant histology of squamous features and uh, plasma cytoid features. And we also look at the subcellular localization of these targets, uh, membranes versus cytoplasmic. I think these studies are important and should include upper tract disease. Um, and uh, I think for the moment, uh, I think we use these ADCs I mean, metastatic urothelial cancer across the upper lower tract if there is an indication. And we do not test for Nectin-4 or TROP-2 for now. I think we have to see how the, the field goes in the future. But for now, we do not test for Nectin-4 or TROP-2. The last point is about erdafitinib as an FGFR inhibitor. It has an accelerated approval for patients with FGFR2 or FGFR3 activating mutation or fusion, not amplification, and that uh, uh, biomarker is used for patients with either upper or lower tract disease in metastatic urothelial cancer. There is a higher frequency of FGFR3 activating mutation or fusion in upper tract disease. We just saw the data at ASCO two weeks ago. Patients uh, who were screened for the adjuvant proof 302 trial, adjuvant infigratinib or placebo, they were screened and they got foundation uh, one genomic testing. And we looked at the incidence of FGFR3 
alterations, it was about 30%, about a third of patients with upper tract disease who had nephrorectomy or ureterectomy, and only 13, 1-3% for bladder cancer. Uh, so that gives kind of an, of, of an estimate of, of the frequency of those alterations that may be more frequent in upper tract. But the, if the biomarker is present, then I think we should uh, uh, use erdafitinib in appropriate cases. The sequence of those uh, ADCs and target agents remains to be uh, optimized. Uh, for now, I think we should all do next generation sequencing and look for those targets, FGFR2 or 3 mutation of fusion or other targets for trials uh, in patients with metastatic urothelial carcinoma in order to at least have the option of uh, erdafitinib or, um, uh, and, and also uh, other targets for trials.